Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wilkie, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. Today, to talk about the remaining welfares that are going to be here for the North American side of the game. There's only three left, two traditional ones, and then one that's in a very weird case, but it is, I would consider, a welfare of sorts. I'm doing this because someone specifically asked if I could do it. Any specific welfares to look forward to for the remainder of the year or any upcoming ones that are important to get and I figured since there's literally only three left for this year I can cover those three and then maybe for the start of next year keep track of more welfare stuff but yep thank you very much for the person who suggested doing that if you have any specific just suggestions of what you want me to talk about or try and do anything for feel free to tell me about it I'm always open to hearing more ideas as I <laughs> try and figure out stuff to record on a daily basis or so that combined with all my other stuff that I usually do. I swear to gosh, Shonen Nightcrive is coming back. Zen went on vacation at a weird time. Anyway, let's continue on. So that's going to be today's video. I hope you like it. Uh, if you do, you can leave a like, comment down below, tell me how you're feeling. And subscribe to me if you want some more videos featuring me. I'm Wilkie. Hello over there. All right, so let's go. So the first one that's coming up, there's, let me just tell you right now the three that are coming up right here. One is going to be found inside the Guda Guda Yamate Koko 2020, aka the next Guda Guda event that's coming to NA. Then we have the Christmas 2019 rerun. And then the last one comes in Christmas 2020, and that is it for the remainder welfares of the year. If you're wondering, hey, is there anything Halloween related? Because isn't there usually here? No, this is during a weird period of the game where there was no Halloween event. It's not coming back till I think next year. I think next year is when it comes back. Just to be sure. Yeah. So yeah, it's really weird in terms of the welfare uh, distribution of stuff. So let's go first into Guda Guda. So this is weird because the event itself doesn't have a welfare. So if you're someone who's worried about having to clear the event to get it, you don't have to worry about that part. Where they are instead is that they're actually a one-star archer, Oda, Oda Nobukatsu, who was added into the friend point gacha. And that's a really weird, for a limited time, he has a limited time one star bronze. And so let's go in and see what he does here specifically. So here's his kit. He has two quicks, one arts, two buster, which is going to make sense with what he does coming up. His first skill is the artless strag strat stratagem. Yeah, stratagem. Inflicts confusion status for three turns to one enemy. 30% chance to activate the debuff below every turn. When activated, 500% chance to seal their skills for one turn. Reduces one enemy buster resistance for three turns. 30%. Pretty nice. Second skill. Into the Heavens, Sacrifice B. Gain critical stars every turn for three turns. Increase party critical damage by 20% for three turns. Increase, increase the critical damage of Nobunaga allies for three turns. Increase the star absorption of Nobunaga allies for three turns. The star regen is 15, 80%, and 300%. Pretty crazy to give it to just specifically Nobunagas for three turns. And then the War Torn Flower C, 500% chance to draw attention to all enemies on self for 300% by 300% for one turn. Increases own NP generation rate when taking attacks for one turn. Grant self an on death activated buff for five turns unstackable. Attack NP rate is 50%. The heal is 300%. When defeated, party recovers HP. So there you go. That is the um, specific his specific buff here when he dies. And then his Noble Phantasm, which is a D rank anti unit, charges the party's NP gauge except for self. Increases the buster performance of Nobunaga allies by 20% for three turns. 500% chance to sacrifice self. And then he gives the MP he gives is specifically 10% at MP5, which you should be getting him at MP5, will be 20%. And then the increase to the buster performance for three turns is 10% at charge level one. Uh, and this is on top of the already giving 20% to Nobu allies. I'm pretty sure here. Mm. Yeah, this is just the additional. This is just an increase. The overcharge effect is always the increase, so it's... Depending on his charge, it's either going to be a 10% buff or 30%. So you're either going to be giving... 20% or 30% or uh, you're never going to be giving the full it's very hard to get 500% overcharge <laughs> to get it but in theory you'd be able to give that to specifically just Nobunaga's this is a very specific and weird um, character because this is a welfare character that's here to do one thing and one thing only and that is to buff Nobunaga's and specifically one Nobunaga and it's the Demon King one <laughs> Uh, the Demon King 
famously, when she released, uh, when they released, because technically it is the stage, uh, the second stage is a man, and the final stage is a woman. Um, when they released, they were very famously underpowered by a large degree. So they fixed that by one, they gave her a buff, I believe. They gave him a buff, which is an increase to the second skill, the third skill, and I think that's it so far. And then they gave them a unit whose sole purpose, whose only purpose in existing, is buffing her. And then dying and then leaving the field never to be seen again. That is the only reason you ever run Nobukatsu. But if you have that specific unit, you really need them. If you ever pull on GSSR or at any point ever plan to use a Nobu in general, because again, his buffs will go to absolutely any of the Nobus. It works on Or Archer Nobu, and it works on Summer Nobu, and in theory we will eventually get Mao Summer Nobu, which is going to be real fun because, again, that is some, that might actually be legitimately our first male swimsuit if they decide to continue with the trend of her being... of. Of specifically Avenger Nobu being every single Nobunaga in existence across infinite planes. It's really weird. I don't want to get into it. But the point is, what I'm trying to say is, is if you have any interest in Nobunaga, you kind of need Nobukatsu over here. So, and he's super easy to get. Literally just s s summon on the free-to-play banner. Uh, I've been saving FP specifically for this dude for when he comes out, so I'm going to be ready for it. Um, but yeah, something to kind of keep in mind. It's... I know it feels a little bit weird to talk about specifically 1-star units, but in Fago, 1-star, 2-star, 3-star, 4-star, 5-star, 0-star, each one kind of has a purpose and can be used in various ways. So I think it's kind of important to point out this specific welfare. They don't do a lot of these. I think, yeah, I think Nobukatsu is basically the only one so far that we've gotten that it was specifically added to the free-to-play banner under a limited quality. We've had units that are in the free-to-play um, banner and nowhere else. Um, but yeah, he's the first one to be limited. It was really f funny that they did this. I wonder when they're going to do this again. <laughs> I'm sure they'll do it again some point. But anyway, that's the first welfare. Let's move on to the next one, which is in Christmas 2019, which is another tiny lotto event. This entire month that we have coming up, by the way, is nothing but grind, because we ended it with uh, lotto grind, and then we are going into hunting quest grind, into Guda Guda, which is not necessarily a huge grind, but then right back into Lotto Grind <laughs> near the end of October. Uh, I guess not October for us, I guess near end of September. I'm timey wimey bullshit stuff. Anyway, the free welfare unit for here is, of course, Event Servants. Here we go. Wrong one. But it's fine. Nightingale Santa. The Santified version of Nightingale. She has two quicks, two arts, one buster. Her first skill is remove one latest buff from all anime and from all enemies. Remove one latest debuff from party, recovers party HP. Second skill, Nurse of the Steel, Holy Knight A, grants one ally gut status for one time, three turns. Revive with uh, 1000 HP. Increases their buff removal resistance for three turns. Increase their NP gauge for three turns. Buff removal resistance 100%, NP damage 30%. Third skill. The angel that rings in the bell of the Holy Knight EX increases party attack by three turns, increase party critical damage for three turns. Attack is up by 20%, critical damage is up by 30%. Passive skill, magic resistance C, independent action A, madness enhancements EX, which is increases own buster performance for 12%. Really nice on a unit with only one buster, but I digress, I always feel that way. Their third up end skill is a bonus damage to Avengers. Noble Phantasm is a quick, I believe, AoE. It removes all their offensive buffs, and then has a 500% chance to remove their ailment debuffs as well for, <laughs> I guess, to the enemy, because Nightingale is all about healing in general. At NP level 1, it's 600%, and then at the end, it's 1,000. Reduces their defense for 3 turns, 10% level 1, then here we go at the end. And I believe it is 6 hit, which is very good. You need a lot of hits if you want to do specific stuff, such as looping. And let me quickly look at the chart. Okay, so... The basics from here is from what I can remember is that she does have the ability to create loops, but it kind of is in a... So if you don't know, for specific AoE units for quick and for arts, they have the ability to loop. I believe she is strong enough. She deals a lot of damage and she can get a lot of hits, but the problem is she doesn't actually have any built-in MP, uh, MP increase. She has a lot of good like 
buffs in general, but she doesn't actually have a way to give herself some MP gauge, which is really unfortunate because a lot of um, quick servants kind of need that. So it would kind of require you to plug suit and then use a waiver, chances are, if you wanted to loop with her, but still pretty good. I would still say for a free archer unit, that's fantastic. And like I said, she does have other utilities. This skill specifically is great. Granting one, al one ally gut status one time three turns with a pretty nice revive is pretty good. Increasing their buff removal resistance, meaning it's much harder for their buffs to be removed from them, is fantastic, especially at level 10 when it's at 100%. Uh, it doesn't always mean, I think, I think it, I can't remember if it's this specific game where 100% doesn't always mean. I think you should be fine. But also being able to give MP damage of 30% is really nice. Uh, also, the party increase and party crit damage makes her a very nice support, and especially this first skill as well. Just overall, she's a fantastic kind of archer unit to have, especially for, again, someone who is free, and a free AoE quick um, servant is fantastic. So, definitely worth getting, definitely worth um, the effort to get her. I don't remember if Christmas is... Uh, no, you just need Fuyuki. So it's very easy to kind of get. I think, but I, with an exception of one Christmas, it's usually pretty easy to do most Christmases, because they don't require you to do much story, so... Keep an eye on this one. She's fantastic. I really like her. She's good. So next one and the final one, which comes with the, uh, the biggest caveat in the world, which is the final welfare, which is Christmas Karna. Christmas Karna, clear Fuyuki. I'm going to say this right now. This is your only chance to get this unit. He has not returned on JP side of the game because they skipped him. He's just like Samba Quetz, another uh, Christmas unit that was skipped over when they came over. And also another unit that was also skipped over, which is Ruler um, uh, uh, Tiny Da Vinci. Uh, Lily Da Vinci, my bad. Um, she specifically were skipped. I don't know why they were skipped. I know why Samba Quetz was skipped because of time restraints. I don't know why they skipped Santa Karna. It didn't really. It seemed like really dumb because I remember the year was like extremely not crazy packed. Let me look. Oh, never mind. He was skipped because of the Katunsky Sanctuary because they ran out of time. Never mind. That's the reason he was skipped. Wait, no, they could have done it in November, right? No, Guda Guda. What the hell were they doing? The hell were they doing? Why was he? Never mind. I have to do an in-depth look. The reason I know why Samba Quetz was skipped is because I did a literal deep dive into it for a video that I never ended up releasing. Maybe I should release it at some point, but um, not releasing it specifically. I never even was able to record it because there was just so much to keep track of. But anyway, I digress. He doesn't come back, so this is your one chance of kind of getting him. And chances are we don't know when he will ever return. Uh, Samba Quetz, for example, has been missing for over four years. She released on this specific, uh, nope. This is when she was supposed to have a rerun. She released 2018, and she has gone one, two, three, four, and coming up four years. Four years without ever returning. Never getting a rerun. So this is your one chance of getting Santa Karna, and I would say take it. Take advantage of it and get him. I will be reminding it every single time I have to talk about this event, and I will be talking about this event in in the future when I go more in depth about it. But yeah, doesn't matter what he does. Literally, I could read you what he does. It wouldn't matter to me. Get him. It's your only chance. <laughs> okay, what he does, he has two quick cards, one arts card, two busters. He has footed Santa as a skill. Increase on quick performance for three times three turns. Increase on buster performance for three times three turns. Increase on crit damage for three turns. 30%, 30%, 50%. Second skill. Um, grant self evasion for two attacks, three turns. Uh, increase on crit star absorption for one turn. Increase on crit damage of quick cards for one turn. 500%, 100%. And then his third skill is charges one ally's NP gauge and then grants them debuff immunity for three times, three turns. Which is a hilariously pretty good um, effect, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, not a lot of units have something like this, I think. So anyway, 20% at level 10. His passive skills are Magic Resistance A, Divinity A, Hard Puncher EX, increases on crit damage of Buster cards by 12%. Good thing he has two. Uh, third skill is a bonus damage against Sabres, and then his Noble Phantasm is the winning Arpucha Santa's Combo Punch. Removes one enemy's gut status, <laughs> activates first, deals damage to them, 
1,200% at level 1, and then at level 5, which you will have them, is 2,000. Increase on quick performance for one turn, 10%, 20%. Uh, at 100% charge, it's 20%. And if you get it all the way to overcharge 5, it is 40%. Uh, yes. So this unit is very specific. He has one real thing going for him, which is to fight bosses. <laughs> Let me see, how many hits is his combo? Eight hits is pretty good, actually. I actually don't know too much about how good he is in specific uh, scenarios in which he has to potentially loop, but having eight hits is pretty damn good. Having the ability to remove one Guts enemy, so Guts status, isn't the greatest, but at the same time, if you're ever in a fight specifically where Guts is kind of the main gimmick, it would be a nice to have him, which if you're saying what, how many scenarios like that are there, there's a decent amount in this game. Which is why it's usually nice to keep hold of any of the three twos and ones that you have and fours. Because usually they do something that will counter a boss or make it much easier in the future. So having someone like this, where he just remove one enemy's gut status, and it doesn't say specifically like... Yeah, it just says removes one enemy. So that means however many stack of guts they have, they can just get it. And there are some some specific units slash bosses that in theory could just non-stop spam guts. So he would just kind of knock that out real quick, one hit go. And that's pretty nice. The only thing that I would say is a negative for him is that I don't like that this is three times three turns. So what this means is that if you use three quick cards, it's done. And it's gone. So if you do a full-on quick 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 then that means that he will in essence lose every single one of the buffs to the quick and you won't be able to do it again so if you were to do looping for example and you would be able to do his noble phantasm again your quick would not get the 30 percent bonus damage and the buster is also you only have two buster cards so you'd have to kind of get a little bit lucky you'd have to actually use this skill when you had the buster act i actually don't know how you'd be able to take full advantage I don't know, you'd have to probably get like a full board of Santa Karna like cards and then BB lock it in and then you'd be able to use them all actually. Yeah, very weird, but anyway, very different. I like the grant self evasion for two attacks. It being three turns isn't the greatest, but it being two attacks is pretty nice. It's almost as good as, uh, Kuz has the best version of this, which I believe is for three attacks for three turns. I believe if I were to remember, his is an insanely good version. He has like the quintessential, he's the barometer to just how good is your uh, protection from arrows. Grant self evasion for three attacks, increase on defense. Yeah, this is the best version because there's no limit on it. And when there's a limit, it's kind of a like, like three turns, that sucks, but it's fine, it's fine. For a free unit, it's perfectly fine. And then this is just kind of nice because it can charge one ally's MP gauge and then can grant them a debuff immunity. So, yeah, pretty nice. Free Saber, and he's a free single target. I think there is actually not that many quick single target Sabers. I think it's him and Caesar. And then there's, I think, uh, Deer, is it Deer Moon? I think Deer Moon might be the only other one. He's a four star. Let me take a, oh, Kida, obviously. Okita, who's the five star? I always forget because I can never pull Okita, so I forget. I bet if I start looking at this, there's a decent amount. But the point is what I'm trying to say is there's not usually that many to choose from. Usually. Lakshimba is definitely a single target quick unit, isn't she? No, she's AoE actually. But anyway, I digress. Those are the free-to-play units that are coming for this year. So kind of prepare for them. Thankfully, none of them require you to be that far in the story. All of them are Fuyuki, so you should be able to do it. And one of them, you don't even need to do Fuyuki. For this one, you just literally need free-to-play uh, currency. And then even if you don't have that much free-to-play currency, you get a free multi a day. So in theory, you should be at least able to get one copy of them before it's gone, if you're, even if you're unlucky. Um, not too bad. Christmas rerun coming up soon. It'll be coming up in the coming months. I don't know if they're ever going to... So this is the start of things kind of going a little bit different in NA. So I don't know if they might introduce like a an event. My hope has always been, especially now with so much dead air to kind of climb through here, my want has always been for them to say screw it and bring back Samba Quetz. But it's just not seem it doesn't seem likely for them to do a rerun. If anything, I don't think that anything would kind of be advanced forward. 
at most we could expect some different kind of banners, but I don't think they would do like main interludes for. Hmm. I, don't, I definitely wish they would, but I don't think that's just not in the current plans as of right now. Hmm. But that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I wish you guys the best of luck in whatever you end up doing. I just realized there's no banner to summon on because it's all welfare, so I wish you the best in being able to collect the units when they come out. Till next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out!